as I show you these scientific uh, simulations and animations of the helium that nobody's telling you about, um, I just want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy Hanukkah. And uh, we did tell you that we were going to come under attack, and we have. And we've had just relentless assault, uh, just vicious um, stuff being written. I can't even uh, approve the comments. They're so profane. And a third of the profane comments are coming with an endorsement of a second channel, Suspicious Observers channel. And I think it's kind of ironic the profanity and suspicious observers are, are being used in the same sentence. And But all you got to do is go to his threads, talk about Planet X, talk about helium, see what people do to you there. But what I'm showing you here is examples of the helium that he's hiding from you, that Dr. Strong is hiding from you, that all these other people are hiding from you that claim to know what's going on. And um, at now... Uh, it's getting down to crunch time. Here, suspicious observers, Dr. Strong, WSO, S S Steve Olson, even BP Earthwatch, who's getting close. He's using the word particles and plasma more than anybody else. But these are the references, the articles, and the studies that have been done on the helium they're not telling you about. Okay? This is all inbound. They, they uh, talk about inbound and outbound helium and the uh, cosmic rays, interstellar dust cloud, interstellar gas clouds. Uh, the, the recent studies are tell, talking about how those are changing. They're getting more and more dust now. And I am going to show you at least half of the dozens of satellites that are measuring these cosmic rays. Every single satellite out there, even the one Juno and New Horizons, are measuring these cosmic rays. And they're all helium. The HE stands for helium. Look in November. Uh, we had a spike. Uh, I mean a major spike times 10. Uh, early in November when the, the uh, winds were running in the same direction, the inbound helium, along with the sun's coronal hole streams were running in the same direction. And then, of course, in a focusing cone shaped like an hourglass. So then we, we, we can't come in and out of this cone. But here's another count of HE3 and HE4 uh, at different energy levels. And these are being measured. These are all inbound. Um, here is a NASA representation of the helium cone. These are just some of the instruments that have documented it. They have studied this thing. They know what direction it travels. They know why it's fluxing. They know about its interplanetary magnetic field. They have making simulations about the helium focusing cone. And in December, we're supposed to go through it. And this is actually a NASA simulation. It's actually a moving simulation with these particles streaking by and the Earth rotating through the helium cone. So now you know but we made it so obvious that this is happening, everybody's starting to come up with a half-truth. They're not going to call it helium. They're going to call it an energy wave, plasma, particles. But the reason they don't want to use the word helium, because that's a classic symptom or signature given to us by brown dwarfs that burn or try to fuse helium. And the helium is mostly neutral they have found out and and then it collides with with rays from the sun whether it be uh, coronal hole streams or uh, um, x-ray bursts and they become ionized and creating all the soft x-ray background radiation that they see in the sky and they've determined that 40 percent of it is coming from within our own solar system and here we go, one after another, one instrument, one satellite after another, measuring inbound helium, the classic signature of a brown dwarf. And now the, the most updated measurements of this helium, some of that stuff has just been completely taken offline, just completely removed. Some of the databases are gone, but there's still some databases that are recording the helium. 
and it's not user friendly and it's highly technical but I will be leaving you every single link I could possibly leave you about this helium that people are refusing to acknowledge this even existing and the reason why is because it's dangerous and because it proves there's a brown dwarf in our solar system and uh, as we go from one instrument to the next and after, I, my gift to you for Christmas is the truth in your face. And and I have gone, I've sent emails, I have commented on threads very appropriately, uh, backed up everything I've said with links, uh, and still nobody wants to consult with me, nobody wants to talk about the helium. So that makes me believe that all these people aren't really there to tell the truth. And I have called out Steve Olson's channel a couple times. And even when he had the, the lens flare of, of Venus, I sent him a video showing a lens flare of Venus that he thought was something crazy happening. And I showed him. And, and, and still, he, he, he never backed down. And he never even mentioned the channel. He never even consulted with us. And, and now, because all of this is in their face, and we've put it out there, thousands of people have seen our videos. They've been re-upped all over the world. And the reason they're now talking about cosmic rays is because of us on this channel pointing out not just cosmic rays, helium. And here it is another instrument. Now, and, and please, you know, Quit calling, quit calling this energy wave an energy wave. I mean, if somebody tells you an energy wave is coming, ask them what kind of energy. A shock wave. The shock. There's no such thing as a shock wave in a vacuum, unless what? There's particles associated with the shock wave. And quit telling people that's a magnetar shock wave because. We, we measured the x-rays just not too long ago, and the x-rays travel 100,000 times faster than the particles or any shock wave. So it's going to take 100,000 times more time for that stuff to get here. It can't come a year later. And here is a, a, an increase in the helium. Look at the total count at the bottom. We have been showing you ones that were ranging from between 10 and 100 on the counts. Now it's 10 times as much uh, November 11th. Uh, a very special day for me. And, and these double humps, I know they're helium. I learned about them. Where? On Suspicious Observer's channel. And even his minions, Brody Love, will admit double humps are helium. The reason they're not the same size is because HE3 and HE4 exist in different quantities. HE4 is more abundant in the universe. But the problem is, is HE4 coming from the sun gets here first. It has a bigger sail. It catches the solar wind. It runs faster than the HE3. But now the HE3 and getting here before the HE4. That's because it's inbound. And the, and the HE4 that has the larger sail, the larger parachute, is actually subjected to more drag. So now the instruments are picking up HE3 before the HE4, which never, ever, ever used to happen. So that's how strong and how concentrated this helium is becoming. And um, look how our magnetosphere has been compressed down to almost 8 Earth radii, almost down to the geosynchronous orbits of some of the satellites. Shoot, in 2011, our magnetosphere was up at 14 and 16 Earth radii. That's because of the density of particles are compressing the magnetosphere. And you can see them, e even though when people aren't telling you the truth, uh, calling this a collapse. But BP Earthwatch has paid attention. He has not acknowledged us. He has not consulted with us. But in his last few videos, he's talking of, he's using the word compression, not the word collapse. And he's actually using the word plasma 
and particles, and he's not using the word energy. So out of all of those guys, he's the one that is getting closer and closer to the absolute truth. And I uh, am very frustrated because this is our future. This is, um, this is how many of us survive. And this is blood on the hands of the liars. Now, for Christmas, I'd like to show you what multiple interplanetary magnetic fields look like on a simulation. Yeah, it's a, mm, it's not a totally great simulation, but guess what? It's, this simulation is fed by real data, hard data, measurable data. Okay, so quit bashing the simulations just because they prove you're a liar. And oh, look at this, another measurement of inbound helium. Notice how, like during solar minimum, it gets a little bit less because of it, the outgoing wind is stronger. I mean, solar maximum, the outgoing wind is supposedly stronger. Which, which you know, leads to much of different contradictions about the speed and strength of the solar wind. But the bottom line is, is all of these these animations and these simulations come from NASA. They're all talking about this local bubble, and the, and the helium bubble is what it is. And what? Why can't they say the word helium? Because that's what a brown dwarf fuses. And they have mapped every aspect of this inbound cosmic rays. And the reason they are dangerous is because they're neutral and get through the magnetosphere. The ionized particles usually get swept up in the magnetic field, unless, of course, they're extremely fast and dense. But who stood there in front of millions of people at a conference and said the world was going to get colder? Who's, who does that? This guy, suspicious observer, knows the magnetosphere was weak by his own admission. He knows they're spraying many metals in the air to reflect the sun by his own admission. He knows the oceans were at record warm temperatures. And what he tells you, it's go we're going into an ice age. So who prepared for the heat? Who covered their crops? Who who cared about their children being in the sun? Those people are getting severely burned in the sun. And it's liars like that, that this information machine that has blood on their hands. Ulysses, second orbit. Look at the blue is inbound, the red is outbound. How, how is it measuring inbound anything? Oh yeah, energy waves. So the helium absorbs photons and then re-emits them in different directions. And, um, and so that creates this soft x-ray background. But this is a, another Christmas gift for all you solar know-it-all out there. This is infrared. And we all know that brown dwarfs emit a lot of irradiance in the infrared. And my, oh my, would you please tell me what's going on? Would you please show this to your minions and tell them that the infrared increasing along with increasing helium is a sure sign a brown dwarf may just be coming a little too close to our solar system. And never mind the DXL um, flying through the helium cone. Never mind that. There's 15 other satellites that are measuring this stuff. Okay, and we're getting bizarre uh, images and bizarre uh, things happening in the atmosphere. The weather is not very nice, and uh, and still they stand there and are stone cold disinformation artists. And the thing is, is the truth shall set us free, and the elite will need us when the shit hits the fan. Excuse my language. And and I just wanted to say, a couple years ago, I called these guys flat out bastards because I knew what was coming. I knew people were going to get injured. I knew people were going to suffer. And they were lying to you. And on that day, 
I got a CAT scan from somebody I care about. It showed multiple cancerous lesions, and I shouldn't have made a video that day. I shouldn't have lowered myself and called them bastards. But hey, you know, if the shoe fits, hmm, never mind. By the way, here's some nice pictures for you of helium taken in infrared and invisible light. And you guys out there uh, who uh, are, are so supportive of this channel, uh, you've made me so proud. And, um, and I've learned so much on this journey. And I am so grateful to Todd for his music and the solar videos he made. The best solar videos on the internet. And uh, Karen, um, I really thought I was going to lose you a year ago. And you're an incredible woman and almost cancer free now. Um, yeah, who else can do that? So you guys, um, for your Christmas, I'm giving you the truth. Because with the truth then, you know what to do. You can prepare. You can prepare your heart. You can look for love and give love. Uh, you can understand what's happening to your body and the environment. You can cover your crops. You can protect your pets and your children. Um, you're not able to do that with the lies and the disinformation. So uh, for your Christmas, I give to you truth because you know the saying, the truth shall set you free. And that applies to the elites too. Merry Christmas and good night.